I don't know if the universe can hear me. And I don't know if it's going to go beyond the universe. But I just, I just want to try something. <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> stop, 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 Well, I'll be damned. Hey, I was about to say something, though, then I realized I said it already. Excerpt from local newspaper. Ominous unknown killer still at large. Okay. After weeks of killings, the ominous unknown killer is still on the rise. Right. After little evidence has been found, a young boy states that he survived one of the killer's attacks and bravely tells his story. Okay. I had a bad dream and woke up in the middle of the night, says the boy. I saw that for some reason... The window was open. Oh, damn. Even though I remember it being closed before I went to bed. I got up and shut it once more. Afterwards, I simply crawled under my covers and tried to go back to sleep. Nope. No. 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 No! That's when I had a strange feeling. Like someone was watching me. Oh my god. I looked up and nearly jumped out of my bed. There, in the little ray of light illuminating from my curtains, were a pair of two eyes. These weren't regular eyes. They were dark, ominous eyes. They were bordered in black. And just plain out terrified me. Right. That's when I saw his mouth. A long, horrendous smile that made every hair on my body stand up. Damn. The figure stood there, watching me. Finally, after what seemed like forever, he said it. A simple phrase, but said it in a way only a madman could speak. Oh. Go to sleep. I let out a scream. That's what sent him at me. He pulled out a knife, aimed at my heart, jumped on my bed. I fought him back. I kicked. I punched. I rolled around, trying to knock him off me. <gasps> That's when my dad burst in with his 12-gauge shotgun. He aimed it at the man. He almost got him. But before he could pull the trigger, the man leapt out to the side. The man threw the knife in a Bowie knife style into my dad's shoulder. He let go of the gun. The man probably would have finished him off if one of the neighbors hadn't alerted the police. They drove into the parking lot and ran towards the door. The man turned and ran down the hallway. I heard a smash, like glass breaking. As I came out of my room, I saw the window that was pointing towards the back of my house was broken. I looked at it to see him vanish into the distance. I can tell you one thing. I'll never forget that face. Those cold, evil eyes. Yeah. That psychotic smile will never leave my head. Police still are on the lookout for this man. If you see anyone that fits the description in the story, please contact your local police department. I'm not saying nothing. God forbid if I see somebody like that. Jeff and his family had moved into the new neighborhood. His dad had gotten a promotion at work, and they thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighborhoods. Oh. Jeff and his brother Lou couldn't complain, though. A new, better house. What was not to love? As they were getting unpacked, one of their neighbors came by. Hello, she said. I'm Barbara. I live across the street from you. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself and to introduce my son. She turned around and called her son over. Billy, these are our new neighbors. Uh. Billy said hi and ran back to play in his yard. Well, said Jeff's mom, I'm Margaret, this is my husband Peter, and our two sons, Jeff and Lou. They each introduced themselves, and Barbara invited them to her son's birthday. Oh, wow. Jeff and his brother were about to object when their mother said that they would love to. Jeff went up to his mom. Mom, why did you invite us to some kid's party? They haven't noticed. I'm not some dumb kid. Jeff, says his mom, 
We just moved here. We should show that we want to spend time with our neighbors. So, uh... Now we're going to that party, and that's final. Jeff started to talk, but stopped himself, knowing that he can't do anything. Look, 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 Mom, God, I know we just moved, and I know you're a friendly person. That doesn't make me a friend. Just because I came out of you don't mean I'm just like you, so I'm, oh, just saying, you know, just because I came out of you don't mean I'm like you, okay? Just because you're friendly don't mean I'm friendly. I am, but not... You know, probably not as friendly as you. So, you know, we, we, we didn't have to, we didn't, we didn't have to do what we just did. You know? I was eventually going to become friends. Friends is a, is a very strong word. I was, mom, I was eventually going to talk to him eventually. Right? I didn't have to talk to him, like, on the first day. Like, I'm tired. We just moved. I helped you move. So, like, let me get some rest. You know, let, let me, let me, you know, explore the neighborhood, school, you know, stuff like that. Don't, don't try to, don't try to force nobody on me. Don't, don't try to. Force me. Don't try to force. Don't try to make me. Don't don't try to force anything on me, please. So just because we moved down here, don't necessarily mean we have to talk to everybody in the whole neighborhood. Cause I don't know about you. Cause I'm me personally. I mean, you know, I'm just about my business. You know, I'm, I may wave, smile. You know, say a couple of words. Hi, bye, how are you? That's that, whatever. You know, I don't, I don't mean nothing by it. I'm, you know, but I'm not here to start no conversation. I'm just, I'm here to live and that's it. So, you don't, you miss me with the, uh, oh, I don't have any sugar. Do you have any? No, bitch. Nope, I don't. Sorry, I don't. You better go to your. Well, you better go to Walmart, Target, Publix, Safeway, Giant. I don't, I don't got nothing. Sorry. But I see three human-sized sugar bags right behind. No, you don't. You you, you don't see you don't you, you don't see nothing. You, you don't see nothing, do you? No, it's not what you're doing. You don't see nothing. That's right. Back away. Okay? Bye. <laughs> Whenever his mom says something, it's final. He walks up to his room and plops down on his bed. Whenever I say something. Sits there looking at the ceiling with, when suddenly he gets a weird feeling. Not so much a pain, but a weird feeling. Right. He dismisses it as if some random feeling. He hears his mom calling him down to get his stuff, and he walks down to get it. The next day, Jeff walked down the stairs to get breakfast and get ready for school. As he sat there, eating his breakfast, he once again got that feeling. This time it was stronger. It gave him a slight tugging pain. He once again dismissed it. As he and Lou finished breakfast, they walked down to the bus stop. They sat there waiting for the bus, and then, all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumps over them, only inches above their laps. They both jump back in surprise. Hey, what the hell, kid? The kid landed and turned back to them. He kicked his skateboard up and caught it with his hand. He wears an Aeropostle shirt and ripped blue jeans. Well, 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 looks like we got some new meat. Suddenly, two other kids appeared. One is super skinny, and the other is huge. Pause. Well, since you're new here, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over there's Keith. Jeff and Lou look at the skinny kid. He has a dopey face that you would expect a sidekick to have. And he's Troy. They look over at the fat kid. Talk about a tub of lard. 
This kid looks like he hadn't exercised since he was crawling. And I, says the kid, am Randy. Now, for all the kids in this neighborhood, there's a small price of bus fare. If you catch my drift. Nah, don't. Luke stands up, ready to punch the light out of the kid's eyes when his two friends pull a knife up at him. I had hoped you'd be more cooperative, but it seems we must do things the hard way. The kid walks up to Lou and takes his wallet out of his pocket. Jeff gets that feeling again. Now it's truly strong, a burning sensation. He stands up, but Luke gestures him to sit down. Jeff ignores it and walks up to the kid. Listen here, you little punk. Give back my bro's wallet or else. Randy puts the wallet in his pocket and pulls a knife. Oh, then what you gonna do? Just as he finishes his sentence, Jeff pops the kid in the nose. Kid reaches for his face. Just gr Jeff grabs the kid's wrist and breaks it. Randy screams and Jeff grabs the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rush him, but Jeff's too quick. He throws Randy to the ground. Keith lashes out at him, but Jeff ducks and stabs him in the arm. Keith drops his knife and falls to the ground, screaming. Troy rushes him, too, but Jeff doesn't even need the knife. He punches Troy straight in the stomach. He goes down. As he falls, he pukes all over the place. Lou can do nothing but look in amazement at Jeff. Jeff, how did you... That's all he says. They see the bus coming, and know they'd be blamed for the whole thing, so they start running as fast as they can. As they run, they look back and see the bus driver rushing over to Randy and them. As Jeff and Lou make it to school, they don't dare tell what happens. All they do is sit and listen. Lou just thought of that as his brother beating up a few kids, but Jeff knew it was more. It was something scary. As he got that feeling, he felt how powerful it was, the urge to just hurt someone oh oh he didn't like how it sounded but he couldn't help but feel happy is he it he felt that strange feeling go away and stay away for the entire day of school is he that thing even as he walked home due to the whole thing is yo it kind of said it kind of kind of sounds like they setting it up for for like that kid to be like that smout what is it called Oh, I don't know. Oh, uh, Jeff. Jeff the color. <laughs> so, okay, so... I, oh, okay, I get it. So, he's about to turn into... Oh, he already is. You know? Wow. Okay. Oh, man. I like that. That's nice. It took me a minute. But, uh, yeah. Shout out to anybody that got it well, well before I got it. And, shout, and if we didn't get it, you know, you're about to get it. Stop. And how now he probably wouldn't be taking the bus anymore. He felt happy. When he got home, his parents asked him how his day was. He says, in a somewhat ominous voice, it was a wonderful day. Oh my God, no, no. Next morning, he heard a knock at the front door. He walks down to find two police officers. I am so dramatic. I am very dramatic. And extra. But, I mean, it's popcorn. So, it's like, you know, I love it so much. So, when, like, the song falls on the floor, a piece of my heart just broke off. You know? You know? Well, that's how I am with, like, Popcorn, banana pudding, um, Twix, um, Chick-fil-A sandwiches, the regular, like number one Chick-fil-A sandwich. Um, that's how I am with the Baconators at, at Wendy's. But I'm very selfish when it comes to this, and Twix. Let me know, comment below, what snack or food you are very selfish with. Selfish with. Ugh. Selfish with. Where you don't really, you don't, you don't, either you barely share it or you don't share it at all. No matter who 
it is. No matter who's asking, whether it's your family member, friend, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, you know. If you got that one snack, you don't share with nobody. Let me know that in conversation. The door. His mother looking back at him with an angry look. Jeff, these officers tell me that you attacked three kids. There it is. That it wasn't a regular fight and they and that they were stabbed? Stabbed, son. Jeff's gaze fell to the floor. Son. Showing his mother that was true. Mom, they they were the ones who pulled the knives on me and Lou. Son, says one of the cops. We found three kids, two stabbed, one having a bruise on his stomach, and we have witnesses proving that you fled the scene. Witnesses? And what does that tell us? Jeff knew it was no use. He could say him and Lou had been attacked, but, but there was no proof it was not them who attacked first. They couldn't say that they weren't fleeing because, truth be told, they were. So, Jeff couldn't defend himself or Lou. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it, since it was him who beat up the, all three of the kids. Damn. Sir, it, it was me. I was the one who beat up those kids. Lou tried to hold me back, but he couldn't stop me. The cop looked at his partner. They both nodded. Well, kid looks like a year in juvie. A year? What? Wait, says Lou. We all looked up to see him holding a knife. The officers pulled their guns and locked them on Lou. It was me. I beat up those little punks. Had the marks to prove it. He lifted up his sleeve to reveal cuts and bruises, as if he were in a struggle. Son, just put down the knife, said the officer. Lou held up the knife and dropped it on the ground, put his hands up and walked over to the cops. No, Lou, it, it was me. I did it. Jeff had tears running down his face. Huh. Poor bro trying to take the blame for what I did. Well, take me away. The police led Lou out to the patrol car. Lou, t tell them it was me. Tell them I was the one who beat up those kids. Lou's mother put her hand on Jeff's shoulder. Jeff, please, you don't have to lie. We know it's Lou. You can stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the cop's car sped off with Lou inside. A few minutes later, Jeff's dad pulls into the driveway, seeing Jeff's face and knowing something's wrong. Son, but what is it? Jeff can't answer. His vocal cords are strained from crying. Instead, Jeff's mother walks his father inside to break the bad news to him. As Jeff weeps in the driveway, after an hour or so, Jeff walks back into the house, seeing his parents were both shocked, sad, and disappointed. He can't look at them. He can't. I don't know about you, but if I'm in the house with Jeff, I would have, I would have felt something. I would have felt some sort of vibe, creepy vibes. Um, I would have felt something. And now I don't know if I would have felt that from Jeff, or, or no, or not. But I definitely would have felt something. And at that point, I would have left the house. I, especially when you take it back, and the brother got sent away, and the mother. You know, because Jeff was crying, his brother got sent away, and the mother rested her hand on his shoulder. I don't know about you, but like my senses, do the charts. So, if I was the mother, and I put my hand on my son's shoulder, Jeff's shoulder, the killer, just like this, I would have been, like, been like this, whole time. I would have been like this. What's going on? 
would have been just like that. And at that point, my son would have, he wouldn't even had, you know, had explained not, explained nothing to me. Me getting creepy vibes from you is enough to make me sign, sign some divorce papers so you're not my son no more. And I'm already six miles out. Best believe that. Sorry. Not sorry. Love you. But not no more. See how they think of Lou when it was his fault. He just goes to sleep. Trying to get the whole thing off his mind. Two days go by. With no word from Lou at JDC. No friends to hang out with. Nothing but sadness and guilt. That is until Saturday. When Jeff is woke up by his mother with a happy, sunny face. Jeff, it's the day, she says as she opens the curtains and lets light flood into Jeff's room. Oh, what, what's today, says Jeff as he stirs awake. Why, it, it's Billy's party. Jeff is not fully awake. Man. Mom, you're joking, right? You don't expect me to go to some kid's party after... It was a long pause. Jeff, we both know what happened. No, you don't. I think this party could be the thing that brightens up the past few days. He about now, to kill. Get dressed. He about to kill so many other Jeff's kids. mother walks out of the room and down to get herself ready. Jeff fights himself to get up. He picks up a random shirt, pair of jeans, walks down the stairs. He sees his mother and father all dressed up. His mother in a dress, his father in a suit. He thinks why they would ever wear such fancy clothes to go to a kid's party. Son, is that all you're going to wear? Yeah, says yeah. Jeff's mother. Better than wearing too much, he says. His mother pushes down the feelings to yell at him and hides it with a smile. Jeff, we may be overdressed, but this is how you go if you want to make an impression, says his father. He going to make an impression, all Jeff right. Jeff grunts and goes back up to his room. I don't have any fancy clothes, he yells down the stairs. Just pick something, says his mother. He looks around his closet for what he would call fancy, and he finds a pair of black dress pants he had for special occasions and an undershirt. He can't find a shirt to go with it, though. He looks around and finds only striped and patterned shirts, none of which go with dress pants. Finally, he finds a white hoodie. It's lying on a chair and puts it on. He walks downstairs to find his parents are all ready. You're wearing that? They both say. His mother looks at her watch. Oh, no time to change. Let's just go. She says as she herds Jeff and his father out the door. They cross the street over to Barbara and Billy's house. They knock on the door and it appears Barbara, just like my parents, way overdressed. As they walk inside, all we see is adults. No kids. The kids are out in the yard. Jeff, how about you go out and meet some of the kids? Says Barbara. Jeff walks outside to the yard full of kids. Again, 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 again. Jeff walking to the party. And I'm one of the kids. Or one of the adults. As soon as he stepped in, I'm, t I'm already... Already six miles out. Because less than half a second after he comes in, I'm like, I'm having a party. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> having a party. Oh. Oh. Um, you felt that? Yeah, me too. Oh, man. So, um, I don't know what you about to do, but I'm out of here, man. I'm out, yeah. I mean, I, I, I said I was, I was going to help you watch the kids, but clock that. Something is, something is off. Something... It's out of the ordinary right now. It's just 
oh no, it's like something that's just not right. I don't know, I can't put my... I, I can't put my finger on it, but it's something is off. I feel like something about to pop off. And I do not want to be here or anywhere near this house when something pops off. Because something is going to pop off tonight. Oh my God. I can't explain it, but it's just something's off around in weird cowboy costumes and shooting each other with plastic guns. He might as well be standing in a Toys R Us. Suddenly, a kid comes up to him and hands him a toy gun and a hat. Hey, mister, you want to play? <laughs> what? Ew. He says. Uh, no, kid. I'm way too old for this stuff. Hey, miss. The kid looks at him with that weird puppy dog face. Please? Mm -hmm. Says the kid. Fine says Jeff. He puts on the hat and starts to pretend shoot at the kids. At first he thinks it's totally ridiculous. And then he starts to actually have fun. But it's the first time he's done something that takes his mind off of Lou. So he plays with the kids for a while. Until he hears a noise. It's a weird rolling noise. Then it hits him. Just as it does, Randy, Troy, and Keith all jump over the fence on their skateboards. Jeff drops the spake gun and rips off the hat. Randy looks at Jeff with burning hatred. Hello. Jeff, is it? We have some unfinished business. Jeff sees the bruised nose on his face. I think we're even. I beat the shit out of you and you got my brother sent to JDC. Oh no, I don't go for even. I go for winning. Oh my god. You may have kicked our asses that one day, but not today. Don't do it. As he said that, Randy rushes Jeff. They both fall to the ground. Randy punches Jeff in the nose, and Jeff grabs him on the ears and headbutts him. Jeff pushes Randy off of him, and both rise to their feet. Kids were screaming. Parents were running out of the house. Troy and Keith both pull guns out of their pockets. No one interrupts or guts will fly, they say. Randy pulls a knife on Jeff and stabs him in the shoulder. Jeff screams and falls on his knees. Randy starts kicking him in the face. After three kicks, though, Jeff grabs his foot and twists it, causing Randy to fall to the ground. Jeff stands up, walks towards the back door. Troy grabs him, though. Need some help? He picks Jeff up by the back of his collar and throws him through the patio door. Stop it. As Jeff tries to stand, he is kicked down to the ground. Stop. Randy repeatedly starts kicking Jeff until he starts to cough up blood. Stop. Come on, Jeff, fight me! Damn. He picks Jeff up and throws him into the kitchen. You're gonna regret Randy it. sees a bottle of vodka on the counter and smashes the glass over Jeff's head. Fight! He throws Jeff back into the living room. Come on, Jeff. Look at me. Jeff glances up, his face riddled with blood. I was the one who got your brother sent to JDC. And now you're just going to sit there and let him rot in there for a whole year? You should be ashamed. Shut up. Jeff stands up. Oh, finally you stand and fight. Come on. Jeff is now on his feet. Stop. Blood and vodka on his face. Stop. Once again, he gets that strange feeling. The one in which he hasn't felt for a while. Finally, he's up, says Randy as he runs at Jeff. And that's when it happens. Something inside Jeff snaps. His psyche is destroyed. All rational thinking is gone. All he can do is kill. He grabs Randy and pile drives him into the ground. He gets on top of him and punches him straight in the heart. The punch causes Randy's heart to stop. Randy's gasping for breath. Jeff hammers down on him, punch after punch. Blood gushes from Randy's body until he takes one final breath and dies. I told you to stop. Everyone's looking at Jeff now. The parents, the crying kids, even Troy and Keith. Although they easily break from their gaze and point their guns at Jeff. Jeff sees the guns trained on him and runs for the sea. As he runs, Troy and Keith let out fire on him, each shot missing. Jeff runs up the stairs and his Troy and Keith follow up from behind. As they let out their final round of bullets, Jeff ducks into the bathroom. He grabs the towel rack and rips it off the wall. Troy and Keith race up, knives ready. Troy swings his knife at Jeff, who backs away, and BAM!
bangs the towel rack against Troy's face. Troy goes down hard, and now all that's left is Keith. He's more agile than Troy, though, and ducks when Jeff swings the towel rack. He drops the knife, grabs Jeff by the neck. He pushes him against the wall. A thing of bleach falls down on top of us from the top shelf. It burnt both of them. They both started to scream. Jeff wiped his eyes as best he could. He pulled back the towel rack, swung it straight into Keith's head. As he lay there, bleeding to death, he let out an ominous smile. What's so funny? Asks Jeff. Keith pulled out a lighter and switches it on. It's funny, he says, since you're covered in bleach and alcohol. Jeff's eyes widen as Keith throws the lighter at him. As soon as the flame made contact with him, the flames ignite the alcohol and the vodka. While the alcohol burned him, the bleach bleached his skin. Jeff let out a terrible screech as he caught on fire. He tried to roll out the fire, but it was no use. The alcohol made him a walking inferno. He ran down the hall, fell down the stairs. Everyone started screaming as they saw Jeff, now a man on fire, drop to the ground nearly dead. The last thing Jeff saw was his mother and other parents trying to extinguish the flame. And that's when he passed out. When Jeff woke up, he had a cast wrapped around his face. He couldn't see anything. He felt the cast on his shoulders. Stitches all over his body. He tried to stand up, but he realized that there was some tube in his arm. When he tried to get up, it fell out. The nurse rushed in. I don't think you can get out of bed just yet, she said as she put him back into the bed and reinserted the tube. Jeff sat there with no vision, no idea of what his surroundings were. Finally, after hours, he heard his mother. Honey, are you okay? Yo, is it? Yeah, I really didn't want to pause it. Cause I'm like so involved into this story, but like, is it weird that like I'm, I feel like some sympathy, or I feel like a certain kind of way towards Jeff? I mean, I understand, you know, something wrong with him, but it's like he's not all the way like that. He's not all the way a killer. Now, I mean, this this whole story could be fake, but, you know, for the sake of the video, he's not always a, he's not always a kid. He's just a kid. Well, I'm not going to say that. He's just a person that's, I don't know, it's like, he's not like this 24-7. It's just... He gets, you know, something in his mind triggers it. And, uh, I don't know. It's just, I feel like if we don't trigger it, he's just a regular, normal person. But if you do, he's a whole different person. So I don't, I don't know. He doesn't want to trigger it, I don't think. I don't know, I guess he's just trying to live a, like a regular life, but you got people out there just, just trying to like, you know, test you, tempt you. Man, I don't know. I mean, I feel some type of way towards Jeff. It's just something wrong with him. Just, I don't know. I think it's just something wrong with him. That's all. You just got to be careful, I guess. I don't, just don't get him upset. I don't know. I don't hate Jeff, but I don't, I don't not like him either or something like that. Like, it's just something wrong with him. That's it. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but I like Jeff, but I also don't like him. I, I don't know. She asked. Jeff couldn't answer, though his face was covered. He was unable to speak. Oh, honey, I have great news. After the witnesses told the police that Randy confessed of trying to attack you, they decided to let Lou go. That made Jeff almost bolt up, stopping halfway, remembering the tube coming out of his arm. He'll be out by tomorrow. Then you two will be able to be together again. Jeff's mother hugged Jeff. 
says her goodbyes. For the next couple of weeks were those where Jeff was visited by his family. Then came the day where his bandages were to be removed. His family were all there to see what he would look like. As the doctors unwrapped the bandages from Jeff's face, everyone was on the edge of their seats. Oh. They waited until the last bandage holding the cover over his face was almost removed. Well, let's hope for the best, said the doctor. He quickly pulled the cloth, letting the rest fall from Jeff's face. Jeff's mother screamed at the side of his face. Oh, Lou and Jeff's dad stare, awestruck at his face. What? What, what happened to my face? Jeff said. He rushed out of bed and ran to the bathroom. He looked in the mirror and saw the cause of distress. Is this what he looks like? His face. It's, it's horrible. His lips were burnt to a deep shade of red. His face was turned into a pure white color. His hair singed from brown to black. Mm. He slowly put his hands to his face. It had a sort of leathery feel to it now. Oh. He looked back at his family. Then back at the mirror. Jeff, said Lou, it's not so bad. Not bad, said Jeff. It's perfect. His family were equally surprised. Jeff started laughing uncontrollably. There he is. His parents noticed that his left eye and hand were twitching. Uh, Jeff, are, are you okay? Okay. I've never felt more happy. Look at me. His face goes perfectly with me. He couldn't stop laughing. He, that's he stroked it. his face, feeling it, looking at it in the mirror. That's it. What caused this? You may recall that when Jeff was fighting Randy, something in his mind, some sanity snapped. Now he was left as a crazy killing machine. That is... Yeah. Um. So, before this... When he was like half regular, normal person, and the other half complete psychopath, killer. I liked you. Half. A little bit. I liked you a little bit. Now, you're just like completely crazy. Now I don't like you no more. I didn't know this was going to happen. You know? I don't like you no more. Parents didn't know. Doctor? So Jeff's mom, is my son all right, you know, in, in the head? Hell no, said the doctor. Oh, yes, this is typical behavior for a patient that's had a very large amount of painkillers. If his behavior doesn't change in a few weeks, bring him back here, and we'll give him some psychological testing. If he don't kill everybody first. Oh, th thank you, doctor. Jeff's mother went over to Jeff. Jeff, sweetie, it, it's time to go. Jeff looks away from the mirror. His face still formed into a crazy smile. Okay, Mom. <laughs> Jeff's mom took him by the shoulder and took him to get his clothes. This is what he came in, says the lady at the desk. Jeff's mom looked down to see the black dress pants and white hoodie her son wore. Now that we're clean of blood and now stitched together, Jeff's mother led him to his room and made him put his clothes on. And then they left. Not knowing that this was their final day of life. Damn. That night, Jeff's mother woke to a sound coming from their bathroom. It sounded as if someone was crying. She slowly walked over to see what it was. When she looked into the bathroom, she saw a horrendous sight. Jeff had taken a knife and carved a smile into his cheeks. Jeff, what are you doing? asked his mother. Jeff looked over to his mother. I couldn't help but... I... I couldn't help... I couldn't keep smiling, Mommy. It hurt after a while. Now I can smile forever. Jeff's mother noticed his eyes, ringed in black. Jeff, your eyes! His eyes were bordered by black, seemingly never closing. I couldn't see my face. I got... I got tired and my eyes started to close. I burned out the eyelids so I could forever see myself, my new face. Jeff's mother slowly started to back away, seeing that her son was going insane. What's wrong, Mommy? 
Aren't I beautiful? Hell no. Yeah. Yes, son. She said, yeah, yes, you are. Let me go get daddy so he can see your face. She ran into the room and shook Jeff's dad awake from his sleep. Uh, honey, get the, get the gun. We... She stopped as she saw Jeff in the doorway holding the knife. Mommy, you lied. That's the last thing they heard as Jeff rushed them with the knife, gutting both of them. His brother Lou woke up, startled by some noise. He didn't hear anything else, so he just shut his eyes and tried to go back to sleep. Damn. As he was on the border of slumber, he got the strangest feeling that someone was watching him. He looked up before Jeff's hand covered his mouth. He slowly raised the knife, ready to plunge it into Lou. Lou thrashed here and there, trying to escape Jeff's grip. I said, Just go to sleep. Oh, come. Yo, you just gonna end it like that? God damn. Um, obviously. This has to be fake. Great story. Because if this is not fake and this is somewhere true. <sighs> Nobody is safe. Nobody. People like that need to be in a straight jacket. At all times 24-7. And the only way you can eat or drink. Is I don't know, like through high intense security, and I'm talking about talking about sheriffs, cops, mall cops, the FBI, police, NYPD, CIA. AIC, I, I don't know, like, you need a government security, you need all that. It was a great story, though, but, God, wow, that was a great, that was a great story, um, yeah, but, like, none of that would have ever happened with, with me, because if I was the mom, the second I, I, I laid, rested my hand on my son's shoulder, and I felt that vibe, I would have left right then and there. Yeah. Now, if I was a brother, and I saw him turn into that first time, I would have just left, ran, and never looked back. In my mind, I would have been like, where the hell did that come from? You're crazy. You're tripping. Psychopath. All of that. All of the above. But great story, though. Awesome story. Wow. That's, really, that's a really creepy face. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. And I love you. Stay happy. My family.